Hello and welcome to News Team Boulder. I'm Brandon Bird. And I'm Kenna Nash. And here's what's happening today. A bomb threat at DIA this morning caused passengers to be escorted off a United Airlines plane bound for San Francisco. The FBI said that the threat was to a specific plane and not to the entire airport. The plane was moved from the concourse to an airport fire station where a bomb squad checked out the aircraft. Passengers and their baggage were rescanned by TSA agents. Investigators say no explosives were found on the aircraft. At the University of Denver, Theta Chi fraternity members have offered to be an on-call 24 hours a day escort to women on campus to their destinations. The service is in response to several inappropriate sexual advances made towards DU women over the last several weeks. CU students can call CU Night Ride for similar help in getting around safely after hours. Governor Hickenlooper announced the formation of a task force to deal with oil drilling regulations in the state. This came about in response to several local governments creating their own legislation on the issue. The government says he hopes the task force can bring, can bring clarity to the role that each state and local governments play. When we get back, what to expect from rising gas prices. And more damage from the deadly Midwestern storms. Right now, the national average for a gallon of gas is $3.73, an 8% jump in only the last month. Massachusetts Representative Ed Markey says the price jumps need to be halted by government regulators. Some analysts say gas could be at $5 a gallon by summer. And now a story that takes us back in time and into space. The year was 1843 when a star suddenly got brighter. For 10 years, it remained the second brightest star in the night sky, then faded into obscurity. Until recently, news team's Bryn Jacobs reports about the one star that appears to have something in common with zombies. But just when you thought it was starting to make sense, a new study from Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore says that Eta Star is not a supernova imposter after all. In fact, it's one of a kind. Isaac Droke is uh, here with the weather. Isaac, is this boulder wind ever going to stop blowing? That's a good question. Let's take a look at the live shot right now. Thanks, Isaac, I'm excited for that spring weather that's coming in. That's right. Should be good. Well, what's up next for sports, Nick? Well, big day for the Avs, soccer, and Buffs athletics. I'll talk to you all about that coming up next in sports. That's it for sports. Like I said, big, busy couple days. Sounds like it. Well, more news coming up after the break. Welcome back. Former Monkey singer David Jones has passed away of an apparent heart attack. Jones joined the band in the mid-1960s and helped record the band's biggest hit, I'm a Believer. The Monkees had several other hit singles and collected two Emmy Awards for their popular television show. Jones was also part of the Monkees reunion tour last year. He was 66. The latest in the Hollywood dating rumor mill is that Denver Broncos quarterback Tim Tebow and country singer Taylor Swift are an item. Tebow was spotted escorting Swift out of a Los Angeles restaurant and on Monday night where they reportedly had dinner together. Neither side has confirmed the rumor. A CU campus staple, student-run radio 1190, is looking forward to a variety of improvements. The station will eliminate many student-run positions in order to better budget and boost professionalism in the staff. Well, that's it for the news. Thanks for watching. This was News Team Boulder. And don't forget to check us out on the web at newsteamboulder.org. And have a great day. It was one of those rare moments in sports where the intensity of a big matchup between two powerhouse teams lives up to the pregame hype. Sierra High School battled Lewis Palmer High School for the Colorado Springs Metro League 4A crown. But to Buff fans, it was a matchup between two of its most highly touted recruits. Josh Scott for Lewis Palmer is ranked as one of the 40 best players in the nation. And his rival for Sierra is Wesley Gorn, who is also ranked among the top recruits in the nation. 
On this night, it was a chance for the two future teammates to duke it out against each other for high school glory. Uh, most people try to pit us as rivals, but we're actually friends. We talk. Uh, you know, I ask them to score some 50 points on some teams for me. I mean, we talk, and uh, I can't wait to be with them and spend most of my time in Boulder with them and work out. And I mean, we're going to be a special tandem up there, and I don't think people realize it because I don't think they realize how good Wes is. So uh, We're good friends, and it was just a good game for us to show what we got to work on. CU coach Tad Boyle once again has the Buffs playing above expectation, which is something that's helping him land recruits like Scott and Gordon. I think they're doing well. Uh, Tad Boyle is a great coach. Great, He has a great program. So they're coming along very well, better than people thought they would be. Yeah, I think we all want to come and work really hard, prove ourselves, and uh, show how good we can we can all be along with Spencer Dinwiddie and Askia Booker and all those guys up there. I think it's going to be a special, special fun year next year. The next time you see Josh Scott and Wesley Gordon in Boulder may not actually be his teammates because of the way they're both leading their teams. As of right now, you might see both of them in the Coors Event Center for the state semifinal or state championship. Very big game. I mean, it puts us in good placing for playoffs and it puts us ahead in the league if we can finish up our last three games. And uh, you know, hopefully we can go for the run this year and finish this out. So it's a big momentum booster for us. In the end, it was Scott who both stole the show with his 28 points and 10 rebounds while leading his team to victory and putting them in the driver's seat for the number one seed in the playoffs. Although this is probably the first time that Josh Scott and Wesley Gordon are facing off in front of a full crowd, it certainly won't be the last. Brandon Bird, News Team Boulder. Thanks, John. Finally, it looks like the weather's heating up. Well, it seems like everything is heating up. March Madness is right around the corner, right, Brandon? That's right. And if the Buffs want any part of March Madness, they'll have to rack up a few wins. We'll show you if they got past first-round opponent Utah after the break. If the CU men's basketball team wants any part of the NCAA tourney, they need to wheel off a few t victories in the Pac-12 tournament. That means four wins in four days, and it all started last night as the Buffs took on the Utah Utes in the first round. Let's head out to the Staples Center. The Buffs struggled to score early in this one, and they were only one of 11 from downtown. Andre Robertson hit the only floor. Then right before the buzzer, Dijon Farr lobs a rainbow and nails the deep three to cut the Buffs lead to two going into halftime. Dijon. Former Ute Marlon Brown went coast to coast, nailed the sweep up and under to Browning give the Buffs a four point the lead. And they never looked back Colin as Brown they went on to 39. win 53 to 41. Ted Boyle for the Wing first gave, time in gave Colorado the Buffs history. 20 wins back in the season, which means Ted Boyle becomes seasons. the first coach in CU history to have back to back 20 win seasons. The Buffs advanced to play Oregon tonight nice at 9.30 p.m. Colorado, in the second especially round. Especially once the they picked up. Of course, other Pac-12 teams were in action last night. No big upsets during yesterday's play. The only exciting game of the day was Oregon State's narrow victory over Washington State. Stanford killed ASU in part to Ch Chasson Randall's 30 points, and both hometown teams faced off in USC and UCLA. It was a close first half, but the Bruins ran away with this one late. With top seeds advancing, that makes tonight a little more interesting. A hot Stanford team will take on rival Cal. The Cardinal beat the Bears last week in the regular season finale. The Bruins face off against the Wildcats, who split their season series with the Bruins. The Huskies will face the Beavers in the early game, <coughs> who they beat twice this season. And, of course, the Buffs look to knock off Oregon for the second time this year. The CU women's team also took on Utah in the first round of the women's Pac-12 tournament. Similar to the men's, the women held the Utes to 41 points, and Britney Spears' 21 points led the Buffs to a 14-point victory. The women's team will take on the second seed Cal tonight at 6 p.m. Staying on the hardwood, the Nuggets were riding a five-game winning streak heading into their game with the Cavaliers. In the first quarter, the Nuggets were up 41-36 when Alonzo D teaches the Nuggets a lesson with a monster dunk over two Nuggets defenders. Now the fourth quarter, less than half a minute left, rookie Kyrie Irving makes a driving right-handed layup that put the Cavs up by one. On the other hand, Nene just triples in a little layup to put the Nuggets up by one with only 15 seconds to play. 
Back and forth we go. Irving drives in for another beautiful layup with only four seconds to play. With the Cavs up by one, Ty Lawson got an inbound pass and tried to go for the win. Four draw foul, but no. The Nuggets fall to the Cavs 199 and snap their five game winning streak in a very exciting game. The Nuggets fall 22 to 18 and are now seventh in the West. Another chapter has been added to the Peyton Manning saga. Will he stay or will he go? Isaac Droke has more on the future of one of the game's best. Well, guys, that's all the time we have for sports. Thanks, Brandon. Yes, and a sporty lifestyle can make a person exhausted. We have tips for maintaining your sanity during sleep-deprived moments coming up next.